Okay, well, we know Sweet Baby Ink is at it again. Uh, this time, there's a big denial that they're even involved, but they're still listed in the credits. So let's take a look. Rewinding back a little bit, Sweet Baby Ink, uh, they went after a creator of a website or a curator group on Steam. Uh, employees from Sweet Baby Ink tried to get him cancelled. Uh, in the process, this balloon, and it had the Streisand effect. Uh, Sweet Baby Ink is a company, they work out of Montreal, Quebec, uh, trying to change the narrative to stories to something that is more social justice oriented uh, and affirmative action oriented under the, uh, the name of DEI, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. These things in humanity, they were casted out long ago and have now made a resurface in a political style sphere of video games. This is why we talk about it, because a lot of this stuff is just falling flat on its face and it can't stand on its own two feet. And they're telling the general public and the general gamers that they must support these actions in order to push forward with some sort of activist nightmare. Spitfire Interactive responds to tactics over its Capes game being added to the DEI detected website after it consulted with Sweet Baby Inc. Kabutus Rambu, the person that owns the group, announced the game was being added to DEI Detected on X. He wrote, Sup guys, I bring a new Sweet Baby Inc. game for y'all. He then shared a link to DEI Detected, which notes that Sweet Baby Inc. is listed in the game's credits, including company's co-founder, David Bedard, and one of its agitators, Chris Kindred, the person that tried to cancel Kabutus Rambo and actually have his Steam account shut down of his Steam library, all because he put up a resume of Sweet Baby Inc., which they already list on their own website. The credits were pulled from YouTuber uh, Christopher Odd's channel. So they, they list Chris Kindred and David Bardard under Sweet Baby Inc. in the credits of this new game. Spitfire Interactive developer Penta released the game being added to the DEI detected website writing on the game's forum on the forum on Steam page. We added already had three months and 14 pages of constructed discussion about DEI in the forum and delivered a gameplay updated focusing on the exact on exactly what the player base wanted leading to 80% positive reviews. I hate to tell you this but a game that has better review status, say 70% positive reviews on a game I am going to trust more than a game that has 80 or 90% positive reviews. Why is that? Well, in a lot of cases, it gets cured and curated. And that curation of the 90 and 80%, 80 is a little bit better, but 85, 89 to 90 and above, you kind of got to walk into that territory. That means people aren't really finding much wrong with it and then you have to sit there and scale the amount of reviews versus the amount of sales that have had there just to get a better idea of what you're actually getting there don't just go with 80 percent off of uh off steam or metacritic use them all in that sense he continued you don't may and take my word for it but you can actually read it on for yourself they list one of the uh community tabs uh but we're already able to explain that sbi only worked briefly mainly to bring four or five people strong indie dev team in contract with fitting voice actors together with devs two years plus ago and many first spectacle players were able to find out there were no hidden agenda or something else we focused down our throats or other concerns they had besides the well-rounded diverse cast obviously diversity is something that is formed naturally i can tell you right now something that i haven't ever seen in my current workplace i'm an electrician my current workplace i have never seen in in all my time in in the field a very large um regiment of women in the electrical field it, it it's great to see that and it's something that has naturally progressed over time it's not like all of a sudden they're they're turning around and just hiring people off the street going a or b it's something that i haven't seen in a very long time when this continues to go forward and it's great to see that this has been a natural course of the matter 
unlike what we see with uh, Sweet Baby Ink, they will turn around and unnaturally turn around and remove one character and place them with someone else just out of the sake of diversity and inclusion. That's what makes things bad in the sense you don't have the natural flow for it and it, it becomes forced. And when you force those agendas on people and then it turns around, you have journalists like uh, Kotaku's Alyssa Magante sitting there telling us that because you're not going to support this game, you're either racist, you're homophobic, you're misogynistic or whatever thing they pull out of the, the rabbit's hat that day and just put the label on the general public. That's not what's going on. That That's not true storytelling at that point. Uh, why don't we just focus on the most important question that, that's the OP was mentioning already is Cape's fun. Uh, and this is exactly what brought up the positive reactions towards our most recent update. We think you will enjoy it if you give it a chance. While Penta claims the most recent reviews are positive, the most helpful reviews in the past 30 days are negative. Uh, Shinelight bashed the game and wrote on the 31st, the tactics aren't fun. The cast uh, is a diversity quota checklist, not actual characters. The game's tone is all over the place. I don't want to play it. I don't want to watch it for the story either. I don't, I, in both gameplay and story, the game acts like a der derivative of a derivative of a derivative. There's no soul here, nothing interesting. It's like a superhero game made by people who hate superheroes. And that's been part of it. The, uh, a lot of what has been going on in these video games, this sort of narrative and agenda are done by people that just don't have a care in the world and they want to tell you what you're supposed to like instead of you actually discovering what you're going to like in a video game. They don't want your, you to have fun with these games. They want you to learn a lesson and they want you to feel bad about yourself to play these games. And that is why it's such a big thing why we talk about it on this channel, because a lot of these things aren't fun. I wanna have fun with the video game. I wanna have fun just doing things. And that's something that we preach here on this channel. Keep gaming fun. And this is the darker side of what's been going on in narrative design in video games for quite a while. And that's exactly it. Quite a while we've been seeing this in video games and they just fall flat on their face. You know, this is another story. Sweet Baby Inc. has been one of those design companies that once they get their hands into something, you've got to question what's going on with them because they're, they're only there as a sensitivity consultant and they're going to change the storylines. They're going to change what people originally wanted to create. And unfortunately, that's who they are. That's what they sell as a business. And this is also the same business that sat there at uh, Game Developers Conference trying to tell developers, if you don't like it, maybe we will find some reason for you guys to do this under the guise of it's disparaging not to. Anyway, I'm your Prokity in Phoenix Center Shadow. I am signing off here. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. <laughs>